What is motion? And how do we represent motion graphically? Hmm, let's talk about that. So, before we start graphing anything, let's talk about the three things that we're going to be analyzing with our graphs. Da -da -da -da. First thing is displacement. Now, the definition of displacement is the distance traveled from your starting point, basically where you're located, all right? The symbol for displacement is S, because D is used for distance, and distance is just the total distance. Let's say I run five miles north, five miles south. My distance is 10 miles, but my displacement is zero, because I ended up right back where I started. I didn't end up any farther away from my starting point than when I first began. So distance and displacement are similar, but different. The metric system, we measure the displacement in meters. All right, so displacement symbol is S, measured in meters. Awesome. Let's talk about velocity. Velocity is the rate of change of your displacement. So how quickly you're changing the displacement? Are you going fast? Are you going slow? Whatever that is, uh, velocity V is how quickly your displacement's changing. It's measured in meters per second. So you take your meters, you change in meters, divided by your seconds. Acceleration is how quickly you're changing your velocity. So if you start at rest, like this, and you start walking, and then you change your speed uh, really quickly, then you would say your velocity is changing, it's increasing. And since your velocity is increasing as time goes on, you can say you're accelerating. You can also do the reverse. You can have a high velocity at first and then slow down to a really slow speed and that also results in acceleration. There'll be a negative acceleration or in layman's terms, a lot of times we call that deceleration. So you can speed up, you can slow down. And both of those result in an acceleration. Another thing you can do for acceleration is change direction because velocity requires you to travel in a straight path. If you change direction, you're also changing um, your velocity because your displacement's changing. And since that's happening, since you're changing your velocity over time, you are also accelerating. So three things to, ch to have acceleration, you have to either speed up, you have to slow down, or change direction. Any three of those criteria are met, and you are accelerating. Sweet. Now you can have a positive acceleration if you're picking up speed, or a negative acceleration if you're decreasing speed. A lot of times we call that deceleration. All right. So acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. In other words, acceleration A is your meters per second divided by seconds. So you're just figuring out how many meters per second you're traveling each second. Let's do some practice. Here I have Appa. Say hi, Appa. <laughs> Opposite is sitting here chilling, all right? Eating his cabbages, all right? So uh, let's try to figure out, if you were to graphically represent Oppa's motion using displacement, velocity, and acceleration, what would his graph look like right now? Hmm. Well, he's not moving. So what would a graph of not moving look like? Let's find out. Okay, so here I have Oppa. And here I have a motion detector from Vernier. It's pretty cool. Now the way this thing works is when I turn it on, it's gonna send out sound waves, like sonar. It's gonna go click, 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 click. And whatever it bounces off of, it's gonna travel out from here and it bounces off an object. So for example, if Oppa's like standing right here, the sonar is going to travel through space, bounce off of Oppa, get back to the sonar and based on the location or the amount of time it takes for that sonar to travel back to the detector, it knows exactly where this object is. And so if Oppa starts moving, it detects that because that space is changing. So we're gonna use this motion detector to plot Oppa's motion. And the first one we're gonna do is just have him sit, stay, stay there at rest and see what happens. And it actually plots the displacement versus time and velocity versus time graphs for us. Let's see what happens. So you notice, I'm gonna hit play on the collector, and as Oppa starts moving, it's gonna produce two graphs. The top graph is displacement versus time, and the bottom graph is velocity versus time. I'm actually just gonna zoom in on that top graph, and enlarge it so you can see a little better. I'll hit play, and start moving them around.
All right. So you can notice that since he was moving around, there's all these up and down, his displacement was moving a lot, all right? He was going back and forth, back and forth. So that's what all the spikes are for. Now let's keep it a little bit more consistent. Now let's see what the graph looks like when Appa doesn't move, all right? Let's begin. Interesting. So you notice over there that as Appa stayed in one position, his displacement, his meters away from the uh, motion detector remain constant. Basically, imagine the motion detector is down here. Appa's located right here. And as time went on, his position didn't change. He didn't get any closer to the motion detector or any farther away from the motion detector. If you were to move closer to the motion detector, this line would go down. If you were to move farther away from the motion detector, this line would go up. But instead, he just kind of held that same distance away from the motion detector as time went on. So whatever that distance was in meters was his position. His velocity, since his position or displacement was not changing, his velocity was always zero. So his velocity started at zero. If you were to start moving and uh, pick up speed, his velocity would become positive. If you were to walk backwards or move backwards, his velocity would become negative, but he didn't move at all. So his velocity just stayed at zero. It stayed right on that line. So both lines were just flat. One line was flat uh, at some value, and the velocity line, if you look closely, was actually just flat at the mark zero. Okay, so here we have a little simulation, and we're gonna play around with this guy called the Moving Man to kind of go further with this. So I can move his position by doing this, as I, uh, to the right is a positive dis uh, position or displacement, and to the left is a negative displacement. So I'm going to start away on the left. I'm going to give him a positive velocity. So let's just give him some positive velocity of like 1.67 meters per second. Positive velocity means he's moving to the right. Negative velocity means he moves to the left. I'll leave the acceleration at zero for now. All right, so I'm going to hit play. Let's see what happens. Now you can see his position starts at negative 10 but it goes up at a linear rate, basically just a straight line uh, at a constant upward slope. You can look at the velocity, and it's just a constant horizontal line uh, that just keeps going constant. And then the acceleration is just a constant line at zero. So just kind of re review here, when the object wasn't moving like Appa was, his displacement was some constant positive value and it just stayed at that same location. His velocity was a constant zero value. And because his velocity wasn't changing, if you remember acceleration is a change in velocity over time, since this was zero, its change in velocity is also zero, so its acceleration would also be zero. All right? So for a non-moving object, this is what the graphs look like. A constant horizontal line here, zero for velocity, zero for acceleration. As we just saw though, with the uh, moving man, he was moving at a constant velocity, so his displacement went up at a linear fashion, meaning as time went on, he covered more and more distance away from that origin. He uh, went up at a constant rate. Whereas the velocity graph was some constant positive value. He had some speed moving forward and he held that speed at a constant rate, it didn't change. His acceleration, because his velocity did not change, and acceleration is a change in velocity over time, that just remains zero. Let's try some more examples. All right, so let's start the man at position zero. So he's starting at on the zero marker here, but this time let's give him a negative velocity. If you remember, negative velocity means moving to the left, positive means moving to the right. Let's keep his acceleration at zero for now, and let's see what happens. Hi, I'm the moving man. I can move to the left without actually moving my feet. Can you do that? I'm so cool, look at me go. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. This is so fun. Look, a tree, hey. Interesting fellow, wasn't he? All right, so he was moving backwards at a constant velocity. So if you look at that, we can see that the graphs kind of look like this. His position started at zero, and he went backwards at a constant rate. Now it's kind of arbitrary where his position went. If you would have started up here and moved backwards at a constant rate, his graph would look like that. But basically, it's just a negative linear graph. It's negative and it's linear. The velocity graph, if you notice, because he's moving to the left instead of to the right, it's a negative velocity. 
So he has some negative value for his velocity, and he just held that constant rate. And then finally, because he wasn't changing his velocity, he held that constant negative velocity. His acceleration was just a constant zero. It didn't change. So for an object moving with a negative velocity, these are the graphs or t shapes of the graphs that are made. Cool. Let's continue. So what does acceleration look like? Well, let's start over here. Let's say he starts at zero again. Let's not give him any velocity this time, but let's just give him some positive acceleration. All right. So let's see what that graph looks like. Hmm, very interesting. Let's try that again. Here he's at zero with uh, some velocity. I'll go a little bit lower acceleration this time, some positive acceleration, and we'll see what those graphs look like. Now pay close attention. The position graph starts off very, very shallow, meaning it doesn't go up very fast, but then as time goes on, it goes up steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. The velocity graph, however, starts at zero and goes up at a constant rate. The velocity became linear. And the acceleration graph is not zero anymore, it's a constant horizontal line. So, let's once again review the graphs for a positive acceleration, right? So we noticed that the person started down low, they were very, very close to the detector, if you will, and as time went on, at first they didn't cover much displacement, they didn't move very far. But then the next moment in time, they went a little bit farther. And the next moment in time, they went a bit lower farther. So it got steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. And it actually becomes a curve. So it's not linear, it's a curve. And the relationship with that curve, if you write down the equation, ends up being y equals x squared, or some function of, of a second degree polynomial, right? Now, the velocity graph, if you noticed, he started at rest. He was not moving, so his velocity at the very beginning was zero. But as time went on, at one moment later, his velocity was a little bit higher. It was not zero, it was some positive value. Next moment, it was a little bit higher. But it was increasing at a constant rate. That's what acceleration is saying. It's the rate of change of your velocity. So he had some constant change in velocity. And then finally, his acceleration was a constant positive value. That's the idea of positive acceleration. Constant acceleration means that whatever acceleration he had, he just held that value the entire time. Interesting. Let's do one more. This time, I'm going to take the guy and I'm going to move him all the way to the left. Basically, I'm going to need some space because he's going to move around a lot. I want to put his velocity all the way up. So if I do this, that means he's going to move all the way to the right. Um, and he's going to move at a constant speed, unless I give him a negative acceleration. So I'm going to give him some negative acceleration, maybe like negative 5 or so. And we'll see what that looks like. What's negative acceleration look like? Huh, interesting. So he's going to the right, but he's slowing down. And now he actually slows down to a stop and turns around and starts going the other direction. And not only is he going the other direction, he's going faster. All right, interesting. Let's talk about that. So let's kind of analyze what negative acceleration looks like. Let's actually start with the easy one. Let's do the acceleration graph first. A negative acceleration just means that you have a constant negative value for your acceleration. In that case, we had a negative 5, and it started at negative 5 there, and it just held that negative 5 value, or negative 5 point whatever value, the entire time. So it's just a constant value below 0 for negative acceleration. Now, when you think about acceleration, is the change in velocity over time, that means that since this is negative, that means as time goes on, your velocity is going to get more and more negative. It's going to start with a big number, and it's going to go down and down and down. Or essentially, maybe it goes from a positive number to a negative number. Or if it starts at zero, it gets more and more negative. So let's say the velocity started at zero. After one second, it's going to be moving negative five. After two seconds, it's going to be moving negative 10. After three seconds, it's going to be moving negative 15. It's going to continue that trend. But we didn't start at zero velocity. The guy started moving originally. He started with some really fast velocity. Let's say he started with 60 meters per second. 
Well, after one second, if, he, if his acceleration is negative 5, after one second, he's going to be moving 55 miles or meters per second. After another second, he's going to be moving 50 meters per second. So you subtract off 5 meters per second each time at the same rate. And at some point, he actually crosses zero. Now the point that he crosses zero, that means he actually is moving zero meters per second, and he slows way down to a rest, and that's when he turned around. Turn around. Look at what you see. So if you watch this here, he was moving to the right, and then he slowed down to a stop, and then he actually turned around. And then after he turned around, he got faster and faster and faster, but the other direction. So his velocity started off going really far, fast to the right, but slower and slower, and then he turned around and went back to the left. What did his position look like, or his place for first time graph look like? Well, he started, um, he actually started way down here, but the general shape was, well, he was going really fast uh, at first, so it was really steep. The steepness of that tells you how fast he's going, so it was really steep. But as time went on, he covered less and less distance each second. So he got shallower and shallower. And at some point, he actually leveled out. He decelerated. He got slower and slower. But then he actually turned around. He went backwards after that point and started going back to where he started. So. Negative acceleration is kind of interesting because you can change your direction. If you move in one direction and your acceleration is negative, you can actually get to a point where you can actually change direction and speed up the other way. So, to summarize and recap and review, whatever you want to call it, there are different types of motion. There is when you don't move, where your position does not change, this is a constant value. Your velocity remains a constant zero because your velocity is always going to be at zero meters per second and you're not accelerating because you're not changing your velocity. So that's the one type of motion. There's a case where you're going at a constant velocity. In that case, your velocity is the thing that's constant. Your acceleration is not changing because it's zero. And because you're going at a constant velocity, your displacement is constantly going up at the same amount. Because you start at one point and you just go up a certain amount of distance or displacement every single second. And it's constant negative velocity, where you start with some negative velocity, you move in the opposite direction. So it's just a constant value of negative velocity there. Um, your acceleration is zero once again because you're not changing your velocity, you're just holding it constant but just going the opposite way. So acceleration is always zero in that case. And then for displacement, you start with some displacement that's really high, and the displacement goes down and down and down at a constant rate. So whether it's up here, it goes down like this, or it can start at zero and go down, it can start any place you want but it's always going to go down at the same rate. Then there's the idea with acceleration, where you are picking up your velocity. So constant acceleration just says hey, you, you have some non-zero acceleration. It's the first case with a non-zero acceleration. And it just holds a constant value. Your velocity in that case, it's going to start off low, and it's going to increase by a constant value. So it's going to go higher and higher and higher and higher at a linear rate. And then finally, your displacement then, or acceleration, is it's going to start off really shallow, means it's not going to shallow very far at first, but then as time goes on, it gets steeper, 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 steeper. And it kind of takes off, like a rocket. And then finally, a negative acceleration is where you have some negative value, some negative constant value for acceleration. So it's always just going to hold a constant negative value. For negative acceleration, your velocity starts at some point and it goes down at a constant rate, so it might start at zero and go down, or it might start here and go down, all right, at a constant rate, it's linear. Finally, for your displacement, you start off really, really fast, so it's really, really steep, so a steep incline, almost vertical, and then as time goes on, it starts to level up and become flat. So you're kind of decelerating. If you continue at that rate, it actually completes a curve, and you go back to the other direction, like the one guy did in the video. Right? Now, those are the different types of motion we're going to analyze in this class. Stop, go, move fast, move slower, whatever. Acceleration, deceleration, right? Change direction. And your goal is to figure out how to piece together those different types of motion and figure out what's this object doing? This is a displacement versus time graph. 
What is it doing? Is it stopping, going, speeding up? And how long is it doing that for? What's this object doing for the velocity graph? Is it speeding up, slowing down? Which, which way do I move to make that work? Or what's this object doing? This acceleration graph. How do I work with that? So being able to look at a graph, each graph tells its own story about what the object's doing. And that's kind of where the puzzle comes in. So have fun. Physics!